So we are learning about the memory system of the, the computer systems. So and then as I, as I mentioned, is the performance. Sorry about that. So it's best case. Okay, sorry. So the performance of the computer systems are uh, influenced by the performance of the memory systems because you know the most of the instructions handle data so that it means that the upfront of the instructions are actually the data inside of the memory and then you know to access to this data in the memory then the data should be fetched so which means that the data in the memory should be transferred to the, the register file of the computer or processor and then this process is actually uh, called uh, data fetching or fetch so we frequently use the terminology fetch okay so so data fetching because the fetch is, is a verb data fetching instead the data is transferred from main memory to the register file. So because uh, instructions require data from the main memory, okay? And then, so actually in chapter four, we assume that the required clock cycles for within data from the memory is one clock, okay? But it's not true. So, so actually, if the data is found in the main memory, right? UM and so it will take many cycles to fetch data from main memory. So I said it will take about a hundred cycles and or so also uh, it can be taken about a thousand cycles, even thousand cycles. So which means that it's very, very, very slow. <coughs> so in chapter four, so we also that so if the load instruction or store instruction is executed and it will take only one cycle, but it's not true because because of the performance of the memory system, so it will take more cycles. So think like this: in the pipeline the processor and the load instruction is executed, and then it will take hundred cycles. So which means that the pipeline need to store. 100 cycle also, right? So it means that 100 of cycles are wasted because of data fetch from the memory, okay? That's why the performance of the memory system is very critical for the computer system. So and then in the previous class, we uh, briefly, uh, so I briefly introduced the various memory technologies such as the RAM and then, uh, uh, like, so I explained about the memory level terrorism, so which means that we can organize the DRAM memory systems with multiple banks, okay? And I also explained about the uh, storage systems, but I mentioned that the storage system is very, very slow compared to even DRAM, okay? So, it is, so if we use the hard disk drive, the latency of the hard disk drive is about the millisecond, okay? Several millisecond. So it's very, very slow, okay? So usually the clock frequency of the, our processor is about the three gigahertz or four gigahertz. And then compared to the, this clock frequency, one millisecond is very, very slow, right? Because it's a, it, so if we just consider the one gigahertz of the clock, the so clock frequency, clock, actually the clock period is, one nanosecond, but if we just consider the one millisecond, which means that it's a billion times slower than the clock cycle, right? So 10 to 6, right? So storage system is very, very slow compared to the DRAM. So actually, and then we usually store, uh, store our data, uh, like the by, by data storage system. Because so usually the storage system is uh, used the uh, storage media as the non-volatile memory, non-volatile memory. 
So, but we can use the flash memory as the storage media of the SSD, so which means that the SSD, the latency of the flash memory is uh, much lower than the, the latency of the hard disk drive, so which means that the, the performance of the SSD is higher than the performance of a hard disk drive. But we, we will not uh, learn the detailed architecture of the storage systems because this is the undergraduate course. So just to remember that the storage system is very, very slow. So, okay, so now, so in this class, so we will learn about the cache. So, and then let's see where cache is in the control system or in the memory hierarchy. Where is it? <laughs> So I hope everyone remembers uh, this figure. So this figure represents the memory hierarchy of the computer system. So this memory hierarchy represents represent that in the higher level, so this is the higher level, right? So in the higher level, we need to use the small memory and fast memory. So because the performance is more important in the higher level. And then in the lower level of the memory hierarchy, then we use large memory and slow memory because so we want to store a large data in the computer system. But, but in the higher level, the performance is very important. And then you can find the cache here. Okay, so this is the cache memory. And then I believe I already explained about the the purpose of cache memory, okay? And then in chapter two, I repeatedly uh, mentioned that and the instruction is executed, the state of the computer system is are changed, okay? So which means that state of the computer systems mean the data in register file and main memory. So what does that mean? The cache is actually and managed by entirely hardware, not software. So the hardware automatically the contains in the cache memory. Okay. okay. So let's think about the cache. And you know cache. And what is the definition of a cache? Uh, so if you uh, uh, search the definition of the cache in the uh, in an dictionary, then you can find the definition like this. So actually, the normal meaning of the cache is the hiding place. So like uh, the hidden storage or some variables like money. So in, in Korean, it, it can be translated like a uh, female gungo, okay? Because <clears throat> that is the actual meaning of the cache in the real life. But in the computer system, so we need to focus on the, the, third, the third definition of a cache. So in computer, what is the definition? It's a temporary, temporary storage space. So which means, so which means that the feature of a cache memory is that it's a temporary storage space. Then why do we use this temporary storage space? Okay, why? because faster fast. So why do we use cache actually? In order to increase the performance, okay? Then how can we increase the performance of the computer system using cache memories? So we, I recommend you to use the actually Google search, not neighbor or Chrome search it. Because so if you use the Google search engine, then you can find many uh, academic, academical articles or academical uh, materials on a, in, a, in the internet. Okay. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, I, I, well, so I recommend you to use Google for some uh, uh, internet search, okay? Because 
in the academy the Google search is better than other search engines on the like the neighbor or um so if you, you uh, search the definition of definition of cache with Google, then you can find so actually you can find the definition from Wikipedia. So I also recommend the Wikipedia because also you can find the many valuable information from Wikipedia, not neighbor region. <laughs> Okay, so I think the so, so <clears throat> let's see the analogy of cash in the real life. So why do you use cash? So actually, I mentioned we want we we use cash for facts. That's the that's the memory. Then how can how cash provide faster access to the data? Think, think like this. So this is this video shows the analogy of cash. <laughs> so it looks like it looks like, like that the projector is broken for this for this that side. Okay. So you can find many books in the bookshelf. Okay. But also you can find several books on the desk. Also, you can find the open book on the desk here. So think like that. So you are preparing for the final exam of the computer architecture course. Then you want to read the textbook of this computer architecture course. Okay. Then also you you want to uh, prepare for the uh, other courses for the final exam. So let us assume that this is the textbook of the computer architecture. Okay. And then you want to study the computer architecture. So how can you access the data? So like the information of the this computer architecture. So this is the textbook. So in order to access the computer architecture data, then we need go to the bookshelf and then we need to pick the computer architecture textbook and we bring the this textbook to the on the our desk. Okay, right. And then we open the book and then we read the textbook. That's how we study the computer architecture in real life. Then, if the, this access is done, so think like this your desk is so small, so you cannot press the, this textbook on your desk. Then, what, what, should we, what should you do? You need to return the, this textbook on the bookshelf. And then, if, and then if you want to read the textbook again, then you need to also put the bookshelf and then with the back, pick the, pick the, the, the same uh, computer access architecture textbook, and then you need to read the book, and then also you need to return the book to the bookshelf. What's the problem? It's so inefficient, right? So you you will waste time going by time going to the bookshelf and then returning to the desk while you are preparing for the final exam. That's the waste of time. But <clears throat> if you start studying <clears throat> for the computer architecture, computer architecture course, then actually you will focus on the information of the, this textbook. What does that mean? So for a long time, for a long time period, actually you will access the same book, right? That is the locality. So I also explain about the locality in our normal application, but in the real life, you can also find locality. So 
which means that if we're interested to start studying for some subject, then we will focus on the, the, <coughs> the, the small number of tasks. Okay. So, but that also means that you will require more textbooks. Okay. Then, then so that also means that you need to study ten books from the bookshelf here. Then, how can you access this large data? So, which means in order to access the this large the large number of books in the bookshelf, you need to go to the bookshelf and then return to the desk again and again. Also, that is the waste of time. So you can put several books on your desk like this. So by using this, then you don't need to go to the bookshelf. So which means that you can save the time for uh, going to bookshelf or going to desk. That is the data transfer time actually, right? So this is the benefit of caching. So we, we already know that we will just access small number of books. So actually, in this room, you can find many books. But you know, um, for some specific time, you will access actually the part of books, or the, actually the small number of books. So you can put the, these books, these books on the desk, and then you can reduce the data transfer time actually. <laughs> so actually moving time from bookshelf and also to the uh, desk. Okay. So this is the analogy of cache. So we can think like this open book, the book on the this desk. Open the book is it's like a error cache because it's the closest book, right? These 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 books are closest to you. So if you are here, so you can say that this is the L one cache. It's the it's, uh, error cache is uh, close close to the processor. Okay? Then these books, so the many books, so we can say that this is the L2 cache. Okay, so actually we can put many books like this, but if, if the, some a certain book is required, then we can uh, pick the required book here, and then we can open the book on the desk, like the error cache. And then this is the main memory. Okay, so here is the main memory. So this is the analogy of cache. And then actually in our real life, we actually we frequently uh, use we frequently use the uh, concept of cache memory. Okay. Then how the hardware manages cache. So what does that mean? I mentioned that the cache, the cache memory is automatically managed by hardware, not software. So actually in a software, we have only two kinds of data transfer instructions like load and store instruction. And in chapter two, when I uh, explain the definition of this load and store instruction, I just mentioned that load and store instructions just handle the data transfer between register file and memory, not cache. Okay, so which means that the cache memory is automatically managed by processor, the hardware. Then how can we how can the processor manage the cache? So so first we need to know that the size of the cache is much smaller than the memory. So what does that mean? So it's the same to the this analogy, the size of the actually the space of the, this task is much smaller than the bookshelf. 
Okay, so which means that the desk has only included a small number of books. So, so which means that the, the, the processor, the size of the cache is small. And it's a which means that the, the hardware, so which means that the process the processor needs to manage its cache memory efficiently. How? Like this. It just stored up frequently required, frequently access the books on the desk. It's the same to the cache memory. So when the process when a processor manages the cache memory of the processor needs to store the frequently data on the cache. Okay. It's very important. Okay. If a, day, a required data is not found on the cache, then a processor needs to wait more, many cycles that then each little degree of performance of the entire computer system. <clears throat> so size is small, then we need to know how to manage it. So let's think about the cache. So actually, so this, this, this slide shows the uh, architecture of the pipeline processor. And where is the cache? So actually in chapter four, we learned that Oh, this is the instruction memory, and this is the main uh, data memory. And then, when the instruction is fetched from the memory, then the instruction memory is accessed. And then, when the load or store instructions are executed, then data memory is accessed. That's what we learned in chapter four. And then, so, but actually, actually, this is the cache this is the cache and then you know this cache is is in the processor so actually we can find we can say that this memory is the closest memory to the processor except the register file okay it's the closest memory so actually this cache is the level one cache this, this cache is also level one cache but we distinguish this memory is the instruction memory, and then this memory is the data memory. So, which means that this cache is the level one instruction cache, and then this cache is the level one data cache. Okay. So, actually, the, this level one cache is split in the instruction cache and data cache, right? But yes, structure header. We need to avoid the structure header in the processor. So that's why we have a separated instruction memory and data memory. So in the I mentioned that this is actually cache. So we need to separate the instruction cache and data cache, uh, data cache and the level of cache. Okay. Not the word, the structure header. So, if you see the uh, inside of this memory, then this memory looks like this. So, memory has many entries. Okay, entries, and then we can store data in the in a certain entry. And then this entry is pointed by address. So when you learn about the instruction memory and data memory, then this is just a memory. So which means that a cache is also a memory. Then how can we store the data in the cache? So cache is the memory, so which means that we need to access cache with what address okay and then not access the 
a certain entry of the cache and we need to use the address actually but you know the, the size of the cache is much smaller than the main memory so we call the address for cache as the index okay what's the index so if we if we handle the array data like a0 to like a99 so this already has the hundred elements so we use the index number to access the a certain element of array right so instead of uh using the terminology address we use the terminology index to represent the address of cache memory okay so you can think like this oh this is the cache the cache has the multiple entries like the uh, e0 e1 e2 blah 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 e1 um, uh, 10 23 so that 1023 and then we can store our data our uh, frequently used data uh, one of these entries cache entries like from zero to entry number zero to entry number 1023 okay so let us then we can store the our data to the entry number two and then in order to store this data then we need to use the index number this one right <laughs> so it looks like so <clears throat> Because this is, is the memory, then it looks like we, use, we can use the address for cache memory. But we call this address for cache memory as the index because the size of the cache is smaller than the main memory. When we mention the data in the main memory, then we can use the address, okay? Because every data has the address, right? Okay? So if you are familiar with the C, then you can you can declare the uh, some variables, and then you can also know the uh, address of the variables using pointer. Okay. So actually, when you know, data when data are stored in the main memory, then this, you can access the, this data with the address. But in the cache, we use the index. Then. So this is the actually the organization of the cache. This is cache. A cache memory looks like this. The cache has multiple entries for storing data. And then you can access a certain entry with the index number, index of the cache. And then as you know, the index number looks like this one, zero, one, two, three, four. And then if a required data is found inside the cache, then we can use the, this index number of the cache to access the, this data. Okay. That's how cache works in the control system. Then also, then how can we store? How can we decide the uh the, the entry number of the cache for storing our data. Think like this. We can access data using the load instruction. So like load x1 and then 0 x2. So we know when the, this load instruction is expected, this is the address part. Then this address is the address of the main memory. Okay? So when the, this load instruction is executed, then the data will be transferred from the main memory to the register file, right? And then think about the localities. So there are two kinds of localities, like temporal locality and special locality. So temporal locality means that if a data is requested, and then the same data will be requested in the near future with a high probability. So in order to use the locality, 
and the data is accessed by load instruction, then it can store this data to the cache. But it's obvious, right? So then how can we decide the index of cache for storing this data? First, how can we uh, distinguish the different data? We can distinguish different data with the address. Which means that if we know the address of data, then we can identify the data is required data or not. Okay, so which means that we can identify so the necessary data with the address of the, this data. So think like that. Oh, cache is the, the size of a cache is the smallest. So if the data is stored in the main memory, then we can identify this data with the address of the main memory. Then how can we identify data in the cache? Because the cache size is small, then cache has the smaller number of entries. Then we can store the, this data to, the, to a certain entry of the cache. So, so this is the address like the 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. Then we can use the part of address as the index of cache. Understand? So think like this. So uh, address number is the uh, 16. Like, uh, so. So that also that the address, address of the, this data is the uh, how about, uh, 15. Okay. So if we just translate the, this 15 to the binary number, this becomes the 1111, right? Then when we decide the, the target index of the cache. And then because the size of the cache is small, then we can use the part of address field as the index of the cache. You understand? So if we use the just so that also that the address field has the orbit, so which means that with the, this orbit address field, we can store 16 bytes of data, right? But that also that our cache size is just four bytes. This is the size is smaller than the entire memory memory, right? Then not to access the this four byte of memory, then we need to use the smaller bits of the as the address for this data. Understand? Understand? <laughs> okay. So if the address field is long, then we can uh, use the large memory. But if the address field is Sure, then we can use the smaller memory, right? So, not access the four byte of cache memory, then we can use just two, two bits of the field, address field. So, among these four bits of address field, in the cache, then we can use the LSD two bits for accessing cache. So, which means that for the address of this data is 15. And then we will store this data to the index of cache 311. Okay. So this is the location of the, this data in the cache memory because the size of the cache is small. So which means that index for the index number three, then we store this data. And here, okay, index number three. Then how can we identify this data? So I explained that we can identify data with the 
name memory address, the address of main memory. So this which is 15. Okay. So which means that if we just store the address of this data, then we can identify this data in the cache, right? So we can check, oh, address for this data is 15. Oh, which means that if the another load instruction requires the address 15, then we can read this data from the cache by checking 15, right? Understand? So because the cache size is small, we can use the part of address field as the index of cache or also we need to store the address to identify data stored in the cache. Okay. okay. So we need to, we can use the part of address as the cache index, and we need we need to store the address address of this data to identify the data stored in the cache. Okay, so this is very important. But you know, because we use the part of the field as the index of the cache, we don't need to store entire address of this data, right? What does that mean? This for this example, the, the load instruction access the address number 15, and then this data will be stored in the cache index 3. Because we use the LSV2 bits as the index of cache so which means that so actually we can know that if we just you know the index of the, this cache then we can know that the rsv2 bits of the, this address is one one right so which means that we don't need to store the entire address to identify data in the cache we can just store the upper part of the address and then this upper part is called the tag. Okay. So instead of storing entire address speed, we just select the, the, the upper part of the address, and then we just we can just store the one one. And then this upper part of the address is called the tag. So what does that mean? By checking the stored tag in the cache, then we can identify the required data is stored in the cache or not. Okay. That's how cache works in the computer system. So we can uh, use the small cache memory as the temporary, temporary storage space, and then we can organize the the data inside of a cache like this. Okay. So, also, uh, in, uh, we also require the, some uh, flag. Like, uh, so, we frequently use terminology flag for the uh, control bit for data. So, actually, the cache is the um, temporal space, which means that this cache may have the valid data or not. So, which means that so in the initial state, the cache does not have any data, right? Because the the, the, the power of the computer system is up. <laughs> also, the cache is the kind of as well. So it's as well. So, which means that the data inside inside of the cache is also erased. So in the initial state, the cache does not have any valid data. So which means that so actually the tag for this cache is 000, something like that. So what does that mean? If we just use the tag data for this cache, cache entry, then if the tag is the same, then a processor try to read data from this cache because the tag is matched. Right? So we need to identify if the store data is valid or not. So we so which means that this cache also requires validity. Okay. And then this is 
uh, contributes our code flags or flags. So we need to also store so this very big or flags in the cache. Okay. So each entry has so in, in each entry of the cache is it uh, this entry needs to store data and also needs to store tag okay also needs to store flags like belly bit okay so we need to consider the stored data or stored tag or stored control bits in the cache manner okay so this is the example so let us assume that the cache has eight blocks so which means that the entry of number of entries in this cache is eight and then this is the size of block the size of a block is the one word per block so and then uh, so i need to explain so actually when we mention the word for the word for the some data size then word is the over right so usually we, we can use the word to represent the size of the data but in this example a word represents the uh, some unit of data which is uh, some transferred from the memory so which means that one word means that is the size of data uh, <coughs> transferred by one memory transaction so for example and the, when we uh, send the one read request to the memory then the memory can service the a certain size of data because the, the certain size of data is determined by the width of the memory box. Okay, you understand? For example, if the memory box size is the one byte, and then this memory will uh, service the one byte of data per clock. But if the memory box size is about the, uh, two byte, then this memory can provide the two byte of data per clock. And then the size of data is called the frequently called word. Okay, so one word means that is the some group is the data the um, transferred by one memory transaction. Okay, you understand? So block size is the one word. So so it means that. So the size of this cache, uh, wait, the size of the uh, this cache block is the is equivalent to the size of the memory transaction, a single memory transaction. Okay, which means that the size of a block is the one word and direct map. So just to ignore the this direct map because I will explain the associated of, of cache later. So this is the direct notification. So and then this is example. So if you see that this uh, uh, configuration of the cache, then you, you also figure out, oh this cache has the eight entries. Okay, so which means that in order to represent the index of the cache, we need three. Bit. Okay, understand? Because the cache has eight entries, and then this is the size of the block. Okay, initially the cache is empty. So as I, as I mentioned, uh, as I explained, one entry of cache has a little bit, it's a flag, tag, and data. Okay, and then for in the initial state, cache does not have any data. So valid bits, all valid bits are zeros at equals to n and then cash does not have any valid data okay so this is the first memory transaction 
So world address is 22. So it means this is the address for one memory world. Okay. And then if we just translate the, this world address address as the binary address, this is the one zero one one zero. So why there why is there space between one zero one one zero? Why? But but so I mentioned that not to use the this tag uh, it is cache then we need three bits double cache index. And then we use the LSD part of the address as the cache, <coughs> cache index. So because this in order to access the this cache, we need three bits of the cache index. So we use the LSD three bits of the this address as the index of a cache. And then it means that remaining part of the address becomes the tag. So this is index, this is a tag. So this is the first transaction for a better subject. This is the load instruction. So address is the 10110. So we just check the cache entry 110 with the cache index 110. Then if we check the this, uh, in this case, this if we check the this cache entry, oh, cache, this cache entry does not have any valid data because the flag is the valid bit is zero. So it, it means that we cannot find the request request data in this cache. So this is the this because. The request data is not found in the cache. Event is missed. So then we need to access the low level cache or memory. So in this, in this example, let us assume that there is only one level one cache here. So we need to access the main memory. So data is transferred to the register file and then this data is also stored in the cache entry. Okay. Entry number 110, and then this data is stored. So in this case, the tag is stored. Okay. Because we need to identify this data, right? Data. So we need to store the tag address here, and then data is also stored here, and then the valid bit becomes. One because this entry has valid data. Later, this address is requested. So we can translate this address address to the final binary address here. And then you know oh, index is the one zero one, and then you know no data here. Okay, so this is the means, and then tag this becomes the tag, and then. So we need to access the main memory. <coughs> so data is read from the main memory, and then this data is stored in the cache. And then later, the processor requests the world address, address 22. It's the same. So in the, in the, this world address is translated into the binary address of cache index is the 110. So which means that we need to check the this cache entry, okay? And then, you know, this becomes the tag. So we access, we access the this cache entry and then the stored tag is the one zero. And then if the, this tag is the same to the tag of the requested data, then which means that, oh, this cache has the requested data, right? Because has is the same. Okay. Understand? So we can know if the request data is in the cache or not by checking the tag stored in the target in the index of the cache. So because the, this cache has the data and then the event is hit, 
And in this case, the data is provided from the cache, not main memory. You know what, is, what is the benefit? We can reduce required cycles for reading data from the data, main memory. Okay. Then 26, it's the same. So we just check, uh, compare the tag for the target, in, target index. So it's the 101, 10 is the same, or it's T, so we can read data from the cache. It's happy case, right? So how about the 16? It's the same. The address is the 10000, and it access the index number 000, and you know, there is no data in this cache entry, so this is the miss. 300011. No data, miss. How about the 16? So this same data is accessed again. So we can find the, this data in the cache. So this is the key. In the same way, right? How about the 18? So, so what's the problem? So after these transactions, the state of cache look like this, okay? After these transactions, okay? So we can find that the cache has four valid data, okay? In the, uh, in the cache, uh, then word address 18 is requested. And then we can also trans translate uh, this word address as the binary, binary address from here. And here. So this is the index, this is the 10. So we need to access the index number 101. So 101. Oh, and the processor access, accesses the cache with the index number 101. Oh, it's a value. Oh, there is a value data in this cache entry. What's the problem? This is the tag. And then the tag stored in the cache is different. Okay? This is not less. So what does that mean? Even though, oh, sorry. Even though this cache has a valid data in the target entry, this data is different from the requested data. How do we know? We can check the tab. Because the tabs are different, we can say, that, oh, this tab, this cache does not have match data. Okay? So, because the cache does not have requested data, which means this. Okay? So, Then, why does this occur in the cache? Because the size of the cache is smaller than the size of the main memory. So, which means that, so as I mentioned, even though the cache has the target cache entry has the valid data, this valid data can be different from the request data because the cache size is smaller, okay? Which means that's why we need to check the tab in the cache. Okay, so we can organize the cache like this. Oops. So we can organize the cache like this. So this is the cache memory. So you know the cache has multiple entries, and then we can access the uh, target cache entry with the index number. Okay. So as you can see, this this cache has 1,024 entries, and the size of index is 10. Right. Because we we require 10 bits 
to identify target index of the cache. Also, so and then if we just focus on the uh, one cache entry, and this cache entry has the variable B and then tab space and then data space. And then we need to use the 10 bit for the cache index. Also, then we know the size of one cache entry. What does that mean? A single cache entry can have multiple bytes of data. Right, because when the load instruction is executed, if we use the load word, then we just access the four bytes of data. If we use the load double word, then we can access the eight bytes of data. In the other cases, like the, the cache, one, the size of the one cache entry can be 16 bytes. So what does that mean? Actually, the, cache, the size of the cache and one single cache entry can be larger than the, the size of the one data transaction. Why? We can support, uh, we can consider the special locality. Okay. I will explain later. So, but let us assume that the size of the single cache entry is the four byte in this example. What does that mean? So LSV two bits are used for the offset of cache block, which means that oh, this cache can have a single date, cache entry can store four bytes of data. So we need to distinguish the uh, some data inside of the, this cache block. Okay, then we can use the these two bits as the offset of the cache, a single cache entry. Okay, because the size of the, this cache entry is the four byte, and then so for the next ten bit, we use the these next ten bits of the address field as the index. Okay. And then the remaining parts of the address fields are used as the tag. Do you understand? Because the, the size of the cache block is the one four byte, then these two bits are represent the size of the a single cache entry, and then we need the 10 bits for cache index because this cache has 1024 entries and then we use the remaining part of the address field as the tag. You understand? So tag is just stored here and then we use the one bit for the valid bit, valid bit and then the data is stored to the this Data field, data, uh, data space. Then, what is the size of the this one cache entry? Size of the data space is the four byte, and then so which means that it's the thirty-two bits. And then this tag is the 42 bit, that this is the one bit. Okay, so the size of one cache entry is the 53 plus 32 bit, right? It's the 85 bits, right? You can calculate the size of the cache like this, but usually we just cal calculate the size of a cache using the only data size. So for example, if you are interested in some specification of your processor, and you can find the, oh, the size of the level on cache 
Ever data cache is not just a 60 kilobyte. Then this 60 kilobyte means the size of the data space only. Okay, so which means that this cache can store 16 kilobyte of data. Okay, even though the cache size is larger than the this 16 kilobyte. Okay, okay, the so large block. So actually, it's one entry of cache is called the cache block or cache line. Okay, so cache block or cache line means the entry of cache. And then as I mentioned, this cache includes the one cache is uh, this cache block the size of this. Uh, single cache block is the four byte, so which means that the size of the this block cache block is the four byte. So which means the one cache entry can store four byte of data. And then as I mentioned, so so we can increase the size of the block of the cache. So for example, we can store sixteen byte. What does it mean? And then in the which means that when the miss occurs in this cache, then this cache yields 16 bytes of data in a single block. You understand? So, for example, like this. So, the load word is expected by a processor from X1, from 0, X2. And then, you know, this load word because the Four byte of data. So which means the which the processor just requires four byte of data. But the size of a cache block is the sixteen byte, which means that when the miss occurs in this cache, then a processor steals the entire sixteen byte of data in the in the, in the target cache entry. You understand? Even though the requested size is smaller than but the cache block size is larger, then the entire cache block is here. Okay. So which means that whenever this happens in this cache, then 16 bytes of data is stored in the cache. Okay. So Think like this. So, so in this example, the cache has 16 four blocks, and then the size of a single block is the 16 byte. Then, question What is the size of a byte offset? So, in this example, this is the byte offset. So, if the cache block size is the 16 byte, then what is the size of the byte offset? How many bits? It's four, right? Because we can distinguish uh, 16 byte with the four bits of a glass sphere. And then 16 four blocks. Then what's the size of index, index sphere? 64, block, 64 blocks. The size of index field is six, six bit. And then if the address field, the entire address field is the 16 four bit, then 10 is, is, oh, the byte offset is here, four bit, and here is the 16 bit, uh, six bit, then 10 is the first 22, which, 54, right? You can calculate the, the tag field, index field, and the byte offset field of the address, address of the data like this, if there is a cache map. Okay. So, so like this example, we can use the large, large block, large block for the cache. And what's the uh, expected uh, measure. 
by using large block. So which means that the first the benefit of the large block is that we can reduce the mislead. So why? Special low quality. So even though our load load wall requires a, a small size of data, and then in the near future we can expect that the neighbor data can be requested by a processor. This is the special locality. So which means that if cache has a large block, so and then in, in this large block, the so more data can be stored. Okay. So which means that by this load load order instruction. We just access the this amount of data in the cache. So in the near future, the neighbor data, neighbor data, neighbor data can be requested because of special low quality. So if we use the large block, then we can we can. It's not always true, but we can reduce mislead. It's expected. Okay. Because of special quality. Well, problem is that if the cache size is fixed, for example, it's a 16 kilobyte, and then if the block size is increased, then the number of blocks is decreased, right? Because the size is increased, then the number of blocks is decreased. Because the case, entire case size is the same. So then, so for example, uh, so this the size of this cache is actually four kilobyte, right? Uh, because the size of one block is the four byte, and then there are one thousand twenty four blocks. And then if you increase the the size of a single block as the 16 byte, then number of blocks is reduced to the 256 blocks. Okay. So, which means that number of blocks are decreased with the large block. The problem is the pollution. So, pollution means that, so because of the spatial locality, then we can expect that. The mislead can be reduced, but sometimes load work, so load instruction can only request a small amount of data. Like, so for example, oh, when the when a load instruction is executed, we just request require the, this amount of data from the cache block. Because another load will request the, this amount of data. Also, this amount of data. So what's the problem? The problem is that the cache space is wasted by unused data. Because of a special locality, we fetch large, large data and then we store large data inside of a, a cache. But in this cache block, only the part of the data is used, which means that the cache has unused data, so which means, and then this is, you can say, oh, the cache is polluted. Okay. The pollution is this. This is for the cash pollution. So if the uh, cash, cash block size is increased, then the number of cash blocks is decreased. So cash can be polluted by small number of requests. Also, the other problem is the miss penalty. So this penalty is the required cash cycle to miss. So which means that when this occurs in the cache, then we need to access the lower level cache or main memory. So which means that we need to read the data from the main memory or lower level cache. And if the size of a single cache block is large, then it will take more cycles to build the entire cache block. So for example, if the if we can uh, access the main memory with a four byte of uh, chunk, and then not build up this 16 byte of cache block, then we need we need the full memory request. Okay, 
So it means we uh, waste more cycles for fetching data with a cache. Okay. This is the problem of the large cache, larger cache block. Okay. So actually, uh, so oops. I already explained the recall operation for cache pieces. Okay. So uh, uh, I need to stop here. And then, uh, any questions? So, okay. Okay. Index. 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 얘를 액세스하기 위해서는 새로운 그런 인덱스를 가지고서 액세스를 하는 거예요. 그러니까 예전에는 그 1024니까는 이 어떤 어떤 블록을 이제 인덱스 그 액세스를 하려면은 그 어드레스 스크린에서 10 빛을 떼 가지고 액세스를 했잖아요. 근데 이제 256개를 주었으니까는 거기서 8 빛만 떼 가지고 액세스를 하는 거예요. 그럼 이제 이런 식으로 바뀌긴 하겠죠. 나중에 블록을 봤을 때. 전, 전에는 여기가 이제 10, 인덱스가 이제 10빛이고, 여기 뭐, 바이트 옵셋은 2빛이다. 이런 식으로 갔다고 하면은, 그 다음, 그, 라, 라저 블락을 썼을 때는, 여기가 이제 4빛이고, 여기가 8빛, 이런 형태로 이제 바뀌긴 하겠죠. 그렇지만, 뭐, 블락이 달라, 달라지게 되면은, 인덱스라는 게, 어차피 따라서 하는 거기 때문에, 다르다고 보면 되겠죠. 사실은, 잘, 그, 어떻게 이제 물어보지? 어, 근데 이제 설명을 드릴 것 같긴 한데, 그렇게 설명할 수 있을 것 같습니다. Yes. So thank you for your attention and then see you in the next class. Thank you guys.